they started on Angel Avenue, a storefront, uh, and they had a minion, just a, that's all. And then they moved to the Little White House uh, on Boulevard. And my claim to fame is that Rabbi Emanuel Feldman, I was the first couple that he married. And I think he went to get himself married and then came back. <laughs> There's a tremendous amount of nachas in the growth that we saw, my wife and I, over the years. I remember, we came in 1952, some years ago, 67 years ago or something like that. And uh, the congregation grew qualitatively and quantitatively. It wasn't so easy to build this synagogue and, this, and, the, and the essence of the Yiddishkeit that this synagogue breathes, it didn't come so easy. You see things bit by bit. You don't see a huge, large change, and you don't expect a huge, large change. Someone once asked me years later when the shul was becoming very successful, how do you turn a city upside down? I said, nobody did that. We didn't come in in 1952 trying to turn anything upside down. We were trying to exist from day to day. It's tremendously satisfying to see how day by day small little growth ends up over decades making a tremendous difference. When we would come in and I would say 99% of the conference had never had a matriza before. And I would walk into synagogue and sit next to my mother and I would say, Mom, something's different. She says, the rabbi raised them pizza. <laughs> but nobody cared. It was what he wanted, and everybody wanted what he wanted. And uh, as we brought in things like the coal out, people started immigrating here. Who were Orthodox Jews, they realized there was an Orthodox community here. Rabbi Emanuel Feldman, to me, is one in a million, or maybe even a billion. I think what really helped me is I can remember some of the sermons that Rabbi Emanuel gave when I would come two or three times a year. All he asked you to do is every year go through, pick one thing, and do that to make you a little closer. Try to do a little bit more. And my wife and I uh, have been doing that since then. One does not judge a rabbi's success by the size of his synagogue, which most people do. He's a very successful rabbi. Next sentence is he has 4,000 families. That doesn't mean success. Success is the number of people who are changed because of the rabbi, whose lives are changed. When a religious community keeps God at the center, you know that you are having tremendous success. What Rabbi Feldman did, he made an Orthodox community, and Rabbi Elan made a larger community. It's always been my feeling that Beth Jacob is totally unique, and when I say totally, I mean that literally on earth. I don't think I could be here without Beth Jacob. Um, I grew up in a non-observant family. Um, I did have the good fortune of going to Hebrew Academy, which, uh, if not entirely, but was largely founded by Beth Jacob. I work for the Kashrus Commission, which also was founded by this shul. Uh, I'm, my wife was named, born, named, raised in this shul. My kids have been all named and born and raised in this shul. They go to the schools that were founded by the infant school. I don't, I don't think it's hyperbole to say everything about my life is because of Beth Jacob. The whole family was pretty active in Shul. I mean, it was, it was my life. And that's why at this point in my life, I don't want to leave the community. That's all I know. It's, it's, it's home. It's, it's, it's really, that's what made Atlanta um, my home. And uh, my whole life has been the Jacob. This is the center of life for us a large number of, of its congregants. It's definitely more than just a show for, for me and my family. It's, uh, you know, we just have a deep personal connection with it in, in, so, in so many levels. It's like a part of, the, part of our history, part of the family. Um, you know, we have, we have uh, Akara Satok 
you know, for for everything they've done for us, and uh, and we, we know we just wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be who we are today if not for Beth Jacob. Don't think there's an institution that has any connection to Torah in Atlanta that is here today without owing some of its roots or all of its roots to the founding of Beth Jacob. 75 years makes me astounded at the people who founded this shul. I think about what was going on in the world in 1943. 75 years ago, there wasn't a state of Israel. 75 years ago, there wasn't a struggle for Soviet Jewry. 75 years ago, there hadn't been a six-day war that redefined our consciousness. There was no Baal Tshuva movement 75 years ago. 75 years ago, orthodoxy was down for the count. So what we're celebrating is the fact that a small little group of men and women had the vision and the stamina to hold down the fort through thick and thin. This is uh, just the beginning. The, the community is getting so interesting. We have um, four parallel minyanim going here. We've got the kolel over here. We've got learning every single day and every single night. My wife and I are very, very happy and blessed to be members of Beth Jacob Synagogue. This synagogue changed the Atlanta Jewish community. 75 years, maybe we're just getting started. Maybe the next 75 years will be even better. But what have we done? We've created an Orthodox Jewish community. We're not just a synagogue, and we're not just a community. We are a movement. We actually are a statement to the world that Torah Judaism can thrive in any context uh, and surmount any challenge. Thank you.